What's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. It's no secret that we're about to see some really powerful mini PCs hit the market very soon using the all new AMD Ryzen AI Max Plus 395. And in this video, we're going to be taking a look at what kind of performance we can expect out of these upcoming mini PCs. I do have one in my possession. I can't tell you exactly which one it is, but I can assure you that within the next month and a half to two months, we will be seeing these hit the market. This is not in the final chassis, it's a prototype, and I was actually lucky enough to get early hands-on with this to kind of go back and forth with the developer, see what needs to be changed, what doesn't need to be changed, and try to increase performance before this hits the market. And what makes this a bit different from the ROG Z13 flow that we took a look at on the channel a couple weeks ago is the fact that we can actually take the TDP up on this to around 140 watts. Pretty crazy what this thing can do at that kind of wattage. And I'll tell you, with 16 cores, 32 threads, and a 40 compute unit iGPU, it can definitely use that extra wattage. But again, we've got a lot of these hitting the market. Recently, this popped up on Billy Billy. This one also goes up to 140 watts, but it's a bit different. It's got an internal power supply. As you can see, it's like a flex power supply. GMK Tech, a mini PC manufacturer, has already announced that they're working on one powered by the Max Plus 395. And of course, Framework is going to be releasing their first desktop PC. And this one I'm actually really excited about. It definitely looks really neat. Also powered by the Max Plus 395. But with all that out of the way, I want to go ahead and jump right into Windows 11 here and show you what's going on with this mini PC. And then we're going to be taking a look at some 1440p gaming on an iGPU. Okay, jumping right in here, wanted to give you a look at everything. And, you know, we've tested the Ryzen AI Max Plus 395 before, but only up to around 90 watts. With this setup, we can do up to 140, but I've taken it down to 130 because the cooling system definitely needs to be revamped here. But as you can see, we've got that Max Plus 395 with the Radeon 8060S, 32 gigs of LP DDR5 at 8,000 megahertz, and of course, we've got the 8060S iGPU, 40 compute units, and I've dedicated 8 gigs of VRAM. With this system, the way it's set up, we can go up to 16, but I've only got a 32 gig system. Just like most of these upcoming systems you're going to see in the next few months, there'll be a 32, 64, and a 128 version that you can pick up. RAM is non-upgradable here. Okay, so right here, I've got our TDP listed with hardware info. And I want to show you. We'll just get in a bit closer. And there you have it. It jumps right up to 130 watts. And to tell you the truth, I've seen around 145 out of this, even though it's set to 130 in the BIOS. It really depends on what's going on. In some of the games that we're going to be testing, you'll see it go above 130. And before we get into it, I did want to show you this real quick. I've got fur mark. So we're maxing out this iGPU, the 8060S, pretty hardcore right now. Our TDP on this APU is up to around 120, and we're only utilizing 2 to 3% of the CPU. I mean, it's basically idling right now. We're just using that iGPU. So the GPU on this can pull quite a bit also. First game we have here is Cyberpunk 2077. We're at 1440p Ultra Preset. Afterburner up in the top left hand corner. You can see we're right there around 128 watts. Uh, just show you 1440 Ultra Preset. So this does take FSR to quality there. And I'll tell you, even at this kind of wattage on the Max Plus 395, we're still kind of struggling there to hit 60 FPS. And I kind of thought that would be the case. After all, we're still using integrated graphics here, and we could add a little more FSR, we could take it to balanced or performance, but what I want to do here is actually just take it down to the high preset, because uh, 1440p high on an iGPU is still really impressive, and I got a feeling it's going to run it really well. I'd say right now at Ultra 1440, we're seeing an average of around 58, which isn't bad. So we'll go in here using that preset still at 1440 and yeah i mean already we're over 60 fps and i'd say this would probably be the best way to play it on something like this but one thing that i've noticed here are gpu clocks so i don't have any way to adjust the clocks or set a manual clock on that iGPU, the 8060s this should clock up to 2900 megahertz right now it might not need it but I do think that in some cases, if we had a way to kind of lock that clock speed on that iGPU, we could see better performance. It seems that right now, I mean, the CPU itself with those 16 cores and 32 threads is just trying to take all of the power away. 
And again, when we were just running Furmark there, you saw the iGPU did jump up to around 100 watts. I'd say the 8060S kind of maxed out here. It could pull a total of around 85 watts all by itself. But either way you look at it, this is some amazing performance for integrated graphics. Next one we have here is Marvel Rivals. We're at 1440p high with no FSR. And if you take a look at Afterburner, we're over 130 watts on the TDP. So this one is really kind of taken out of this APU, but we're still over that 60 mark. I haven't seen it fall under 60 just yet. Getting an average of around 65 FPS. So some FSR here would really help out. Love it or hate it, still wanted to test out GTA 5 Enhanced Edition. 1440p, very high, 100% scale. We're not using FSR, and with this new Enhanced Edition, uh, FSR would really help out on this. But I wanted to have that native 1440p experience, and we're over 90 FPS. I mean, I had a feeling it was going to run great. But to tell you the truth, I mean, with this maxed out like it is with no ray tracing versus the non-Enhanced Edition, it's kind of hard for me to tell the difference. Spider-Man 2, high, 1440p, FSR set to quality, and with FSR off, we're seeing an average of around 58. So it is struggling at 1440p. But of course, with everything that we tested here, we don't need any kind of scaling at 1080p. I just wanted to see how it would handle these games at 1440. And so far, it's not bad at all. Next one we have here is Doom Eternal, 1440p, Ultra Nightmare, no resolution scale. I've got Afterburner in the top left-hand corner and the in-game stats in the top right-hand corner. We're over 100 FPS with it, and while I was playing this, I kind of got lost in it. It was just super smooth. It felt really good on this iGPU. I had to throw one fighting game in, so I went with Mortal Kombat 1, where at 1440, ultra high, no FSR. And I did try ray tracing, but it kind of fell on its face. Ray tracing on these uh, AMD iGPUs just doesn't do great. I mean, it's much better than a lower end iGPU could run it, but unfortunately, it falls far behind a dedicated GPU. And the final game we have here is God of War Ragnarok at 1440p high with no FSR. I did try Ultra, but it was under 60, so you will need some FSR there. So I figured going down to high at a native 1440p would look a bit better, and it certainly does. I mean, this is such a great game. Love the fact that they did such a good job porting this over to PC. So the big question is, what are these things going to cost? And right now I don't have an exact answer, but I can tell you that if you check out Frameworks website and just kind of configure one for yourself, it's going to be cheaper than their lower end model. I don't know by how much, but one of the big reasons we've been seeing an uplift in price on these Ryzen AI powered mini PCs or small form factor PCs is the chip cost itself. The Ryzen AI Max Plus 395 is actually a really expensive chip. Even if you go down to something like the Ryzen AI 9 HX370, which isn't going to put out the kind of performance we've seen here, but does outperform something like the Ryzen Z1 Extreme, that chip costs significantly more than Ryzen 8000. So we're going to see a lot of the Ryzen 8000 mini PCs uh, that are pretty cheap compared. So in the end, I mean, it's really up to you with something like this. This is basically what you get. You're not going to be able to upgrade the CPU or anything like that. So you definitely have to keep that in mind if you're considering buying something like this when they're released. 
But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Within the next few weeks, I will have more information to share with you. And I'd love to know from you in the comments below, what do you think a good price point would be for something like this in a decent looking case with 32 gigabytes of RAM and a one terabyte M.2 SSD? Let me know your thoughts down below. And like always, thanks for watching.